In this video, I'm going to talk about bagging. It's the second component of how random forests work, but it's actually a technique that can be used uh, for many other types of estimators. Alternatively, you uh, can refer to bagging as bootstrap aggregation. Hopefully, it'll be clear in a minute why that is. The first thing you do is you draw B bootstrap samples with replacement from your training data. So you have some data set uh, Y and X, and then you just draw with replacement N observations from that data set. And you call YB, lowercase b, that's the beef bootstrap data. Then on each of these bootstrap data sets, lowercase b, one to uh, cap b, you predict y hat b based on the b data set. You, so you estimate it and then you um, and then that gives you this prediction uh, object function or maybe it's estimated parameter values that you can evaluate at some x's uh, but, but basically for each of these data sets you estimate your model and you're going to get a different estimate because you have different data. Maybe there are some of the observations that you don't get into the beat bootstrap data set. Maybe some of the observations you get twice. But the idea is that if your original data was drawn from the full population, IID, then drawing with replacement from an IID sample from the real data draws from the same density. And then the overall prediction that you're going to return is the average over the bootstrap predictions. So in other words, you, you, you draw with the replacement your bootstrap data, uh, B, capital B, bootstrap data sets, and then you estimate and calculate predictions B times, and then your average prediction, that's your bootstrap aggregated prediction of Y hat. So why is this bagging a good idea? Well, let's look at, uh, so first off, if each of these y hats, if they're all um, unbiased estimates, then the expectation of this average over b is going to also be equal to the, uh, the true expectation. So then that's also going to be unbiased because it's just a, as an average of unbiased estimators. So, so that's good. Why then bag? Well, it's going to bring down the variance. Why is that? Well, suppose that the y hats are independently and identically distributed. So they're independent, in particular, they're uncorrelated. Then the variance of this average prediction here. First off, this is a constant, so we can take that outside the variance op operator if we square it. So that's done here. Secondly, the variance of a sum of stochastic variables is equal to the sum of the variances uh, because generally the variance of a sum is equal to the sum of variances plus two times the sum of covariances. So and the covariances are zero because it's IID. So we have the sum of these variances and since they're all the same then that's just the B times so that eats the square term here. So, so B times the variance of any one of them and then what we have is that the variance of our average prediction is 1 over b times the variance of the individual prediction. So when we increase b, the number of bootstrapped draws then in our bag, then we're going to bring down the variance and it's going to fall pretty quickly. And one of the things that makes bagging really relevant for regression trees is that regression trees notoriously are high variance, low bias um, predictors if, if the depth is uh, high. And um, this is a very general procedure, as I said before, it can be applied to any kind of estimator. You could do that with OLS as well, that you draw bootstrap data sets and you estimate OLS coefficients and you're going to get a full distribution of estimates. All right, so this is this is a regression tree example uh, that we've seen before. And we can see that it has a lot of variance 
Uh, it's a very jittery prediction function. Here's if we have two trees in a bag here. And this is a random forest, but because there's just one variable, this is just a bagged regression tree with two trees in the bag. And what you can see is that the jitteriness starts to go down. Here's if we have five and 50 and a thousand trees in it. And now you can see that we're getting towards a function that has much less variance. It still has some movements up and down. And that's of course because Increasing the number of trees towards infinity, while it makes it nicer and nicer, then at some point it's it's less, just not going to help because there, there are only actually 200 data points in this data set. So there's only so far that it's going to help us to add more trees, but it does bring down the variance of this line quite substantially as we showed with the algebra in the previous slide.